Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. After the Berlin Wall fell in November 1989, and the death of the Soviet Union was confirmed two years later, as Boris Yeltsin courageously stood down the Red Army tanks in front of Moscow's White House, a dark era in human history came to an abrupt end. The world had descended into a 77 years war. It had incepted with the mobilization of the armies of old Europe in August 1914. If you want to count bodies, 150 million were killed by all the depredations that germinated in the Great War, its foolish aftermath at Versailles, and the march of history into World War II, and the Cold War that followed inexorably thereupon. Upwards of 8% of the human race was wiped out during that span. The toll encompassed the madness of trench warfare during 1914-1918. The murderous regimes of Soviet and Nazi totalitarianism that rose from the ashes of the Great War and the follies of Versailles. And then the carnage of World War II, and all the lesser wars and invasions of the Cold War, including Korea and Vietnam. At the end of the Cold War therefore, the last embers of the fiery madness that had incepted with the guns of August 1914, had finally burned out. Peace was at hand. Yet 32 years later, there is still no peace, because Imperial Washington confounds it. The proof is plain as day. The invasions and occupations of Iraq, the Washington-instigated shambles of Syria, the wanton destruction of Yemen, the regime-change cum barbarism that NATO inflicted upon Libya, the brutal sanctions and covert military war on Iran, the current unspeakable catastrophe financed by Washington's proxy war against Russia and Ukraine, and countless more lesser depredations, tell you all you need to know. All of these misadventures bespeak the fact that the war party is entrenched in the nation's capital, where it is dedicated to economic interests and ideological perversions that guarantee perpetual war. These forces ensure endless waste on armaments. They cause the inestimable death and human suffering that stems from 21st century high-tech warfare. And they inherently generate resistance blowback from those upon whom the war party inflicts its violent hegemony. Worse still, Washington's great war machine and teeming national security industry is its own agent of self-perpetuation. When it is not invading, occupying and regime-changing, its vast apparatus of internal policy bureaus and outside contractors, lobbies, think tanks and NGOs, is busy generating reasons for new imperial ventures. So, there was a virulent threat to peace still lurking on the Potomac after the 77 years war ended. The great general and president, Dwight Eisenhower, had called it the military-industrial congressional complex in the draft of his farewell address. But that memorable phrase had been abbreviated by his speechwriters, who deleted the word congressional in a gesture of comedy to the legislative branch. So, Restore Ike's deleted reference to the pork barrels and Sunday afternoon warriors of Capitol Hill and toss in the legions of Beltway busybodies who constituted the civilian branches of the Cold War Armada, CIA, State, AID, NED and the rest, and the circle would have been complete. It constituted the most awesome machine of warfare and imperial hegemony, since the Roman legions bestrode most of the civilized world. In a word, the real threat to peace circa 1991 was that the American Imperium would not go away quietly into the good night. In fact, during the past 31 years Imperial Washington has lost all memory that peace was ever possible at the end of the Cold War. Today it is as feckless, misguided and bloodthirsty as were Berlin, Paris, St. Petersburg, Vienna and London in August 1914. A few months after that horrendous slaughter had been unleashed 109 years ago however, soldiers along the Western Front broke into spontaneous truces of Christmas celebration, song, and even exchange of gifts. For a brief moment they wondered why they were juxtaposed in lethal combat along the jaws of hell. 
As Will Griggs once described it, a sudden cold snap had left the battlefield frozen, which was actually a relief for troops wallowing in sodden mire. Along the front, troops extracted themselves from their trenches and dugouts, approaching each other warily and then eagerly across no man's land. Greetings and handshakes were exchanged, as were gifts scavenged from care packages sent from home. German souvenirs that ordinarily would have been obtained only through bloodshed, such as spiked Pikelhob helmets or God Mit U9's belt buckles, were bartered for similar British trinkets. Carols were sung in German, English, and French. A few photographs were taken of British and German officers standing alongside each other, unarmed, in no man's land. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The truth is, there was no good reason for the Great War. The world had stumbled into war based on false narratives and the institutional imperatives of military mobilization plans, alliances and treaties arrayed into a doomsday machine and petty short-term diplomatic maneuvers and political calculus. Yet it took more than three quarters of a century for all the consequential impacts and evils to be purged from the life of the world. The peace that was lost last time has not been regained this time however. And for the same reasons. Note. The amount of money the US government spends on foreign aid, wars, the so-called intelligence community, and other aspects of foreign policy, is enormous and ever-growing. It's an established trend in motion that is accelerating and now approaching a breaking point. It could cause the most significant disaster since the 1930s. Most people won't be prepared for what's coming. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.